Welcome to Electron Online, and here in our series on motion in one dimension, we want to talk about the difference between delta x, delta t, and dx dt. So here I have the definition of dx dt. We want to compare that to delta x, delta t, and how that compares to dx dt. All right, and that's how we can understand what dx dt really means. So here we have a graph before us which graphs motion for an object where, and we graph x versus t, position versus time. And the fact that this is parabolic, that means that the speed is increasing constantly. There's an acceleration there. You can see that it's an accelerating object. And at some point, let's say time 1, it is at position x1, and at some later time t2, it is at position x2. So what is the velocity or the average velocity during the interval from t1 to t2? Now remember that the slope of this line represents velocity. You can see that the slope here is not nearly as steep as the slope over there. That means it is traveling faster here and is traveling slower there. But if I draw a straight line across from T1 to T2 and I draw a triangle knowing that this leg of the triangle represents the change in X, the change in position, X2 minus X1, and this leg of the triangle represents a change in time, T2 minus T1, I can then define that the average velocity over that interval is the change in X over the change in time, which is equal to x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. So that simply represents the average velocity over that interval. Now what does dx dt mean? Well, dx dt means the same thing, but over a much smaller interval. Matter of fact, what we're going to do there is we're going to slowly take this x2 and t2 and bring it in closer and closer and closer and closer and closer so that the triangles that we'll be making will be much smaller and smaller as we bring it in closer and closer. Notice how that triangle becomes really, really small. And also notice how the hypotenuse of the triangle becomes closer and closer and closer to the actual slope of the line. And in the limit, if we take the limit, as delta t goes to zero, the change in x over the change in time becomes dx dt. So what we're saying is dx dt is in a way the same as delta x delta t, so it's the average velocity, but over a smaller and smaller and smaller interval. And the, in the limit, when we make the triangle so small that it's infinitesimally small, that delta t goes to zero, that the triangle in size actually just about goes to zero, that ratio of the change in x over the change in time will be exactly equal to the slope of the line at that point, which means it will be exactly equal to the velocity at that point, which means that this is actually the instantaneous velocity at that location. So this becomes what we call v instantaneous, or the exact velocity at that point. So if I want to find the dx dt anywhere along the line, that means it's the actual velocity at that very location. So if I evaluate the xdt, for example, at this location, I will get the exact slope of the line at that point. That means the slope of the tangent point to that curve. And that gives me the exact velocity at that point. So now we know the difference between the xdt and delta x delta t. This is the average velocity over an interval. This is the exact velocity at a particular location. They're both velocities, but they do mean something slightly different. And that's how you now know the difference between the x dt and delta x and delta t.